salmon of knowledge, the salmon of knowledge, the salmon of knowledge, that one salmon of knowledge, it's the salmon of knowledge and the salmon of knowledge about the cast. Hey guys, welcome to episode 25. I've got a ukulele, run for cover, run for the hills, get a hot needle, put it in your eardrums and burst it so you don't have to listen to the ukulele. That's how some people feel about it. That's kind of how Kara feels about it. Um, yeah, it's gotten it's gotten difficult. This uh, episode is being recorded the Friday that it's going out, which is partially my fault because I was too tired and it was too windy and loud around here. See, this is the problem, guys. Uh, things are going to improve. Sound is going to improve. Uh, the scientists, they've got some really amazing stuff coming up with sound. Um, surround sound because you know the way you've always wanted sound to be like just behind you like a murderer um so the the hairs in the back of your neck can rise up and you can go oh my god is sound behind me have i been surrounded by it i give up i give in sound um no it's just because oh so there's the ukulele it's just because um I can't um, record in the studios that I normally record in. They're not open to the end of June. I'm sharing an office space uh, here with uh, with Kara, whom I'm beginning to suspect could be a witch. I don't know. I think there's been clues there the whole time. But uh, she's gone off for a, a spin on her broom. And uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've been sharing it. I've been moving my, my stuff in. Uh, all this week, which has been enjoyable. It's actually kind of been enjoyable. I know it's very stressful uh, to move, but I don't have a lot of stuff. So it was relatively easy, even though some of the stuff is kind of out and we're rearranging and arranging and re-rearranging and pre-arranging. And soon we'll be post-arranging. We'll be post arranging our clothes, making life, I suppose, when we're going to the shops, buying things together. Do we need a pizza cutter? Do we need a feather duster for the room? Do we need to dust our room? Boom, boom, da, don't. Room, cause I've got a lot of allergies. Allergies have me on my knees. I'm so allergic to allergies. Is that a tin of allergies? Don't open it. I'm allergic to everything inside that tin. Inside that tin of allergies. Oh, get it away from me, please. I don't want to eat a lot of cheese, just a little, because of my allergies. So you go, there's a random song about allergies. So, guys, listen, 25 episodes. Uh, it's been a hell of a journey. Thanks so much for listening. This is the last episode until next Friday's episode. That's right. What's going to happen from now on, every Friday, there will be a new episode of Edwin Salmon of Knowledge. If you are a patron, you'll get this sooner. Not this week, because of my incompetence. But uh, you'll get it during the week, Tuesdays or Wednesdays, depending on how much there is to edit, depending on how many ads there is. And uh, you will receive extra stuff, which will be recording at this weekend. So uh, I have my first deep dive into movies lined up, which is going to be all about Le Planète de Sange. So that's a little clue for you. Uh, that's French. I'm not going to translate it for you. Find a French friend. Find a f- and French to English dictionary. Uh, Toot sweet. And then look up what all of those words mean. Or, I don't know, this probably, you can probably put it through some sort of internet machine where it just repeats the phrase and translates a sort of what does this French word mean dot com 
Do you have trouble with words that aren't in your language? Me too. Well, worry no more. With what's that foreign word mean? Dot com. All you have to do is take your foreign words, wrap them in a cool, dry place, and in a safe bubble wrap environment, and bring them to us. We'll feed them into our machine and find out what it's all about. What does that foreign word mean? Dot com for all your foreign word needs. So uh, there's a little break for um, a little break for one of my online sponsors trying to get better sponsors. You know, incidentally, if you don't like any of these ads, uh, that's crazy because none of them are real. Uh, I'll tell you what ads I don't like, though. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Oh, here we go. I'm going to tell you. JML. Now, some people might not be familiar with JML. If you type JML into uh, YouTube, what you'll find, guys, is you'll find that there was a band called JML. Now, I'm not talking about JML, the band, uh, which stood for, I think it stood for Just Men I Love. Um, but the the I was too much, so they dropped the I. So it's like one of those acronyms that doesn't fully realize itself as an acronym because you have to leave out a, a letter or a word indeed so jml you now jml products are these kind of wonder products that they used to sell because i used to work in a diy store that i can't name for legal reasons but it's not b and q it's not home base and it rhymes with goodies <laughs> now if you're familiar with my stand-up that's an old stand-up bit I used to do, where I, uh, what you do is, you see, you don't tell the audience, but, well, you pretend that you're not telling them something, but in actuality, you're telling them everything. It's a very, very popular, uh, uh, what's the word for it, um, device. It's a theatrical device used by uh, comedy men in order to elicit a laughter. And I find it works every time. Now, I worked in Woody's... Oh, whoops, I said it. Uh, for 10 years. And this week, it's it's open on phase one. There were pictures of uh, many, many, many people queuing long, long queues to get back into DIY stores like Woody's, like B&Q, like Homebase. Like the tiny little um, DIY store that's open around the corner from us here. And it is tiny. It's so small, it's impossible to social distance. You just can't, you couldn't do it. I mean, if there were like three people in that uh, DIY store, hardware store, they'd be all shoulder to shoulder. They'd almost be kissing each other. It'd almost be like a wedding situation. You just have to get married. Well, we've been through this now, I suppose. We just have to get married, otherwise it's a sin. That's the kind of that's how close you're getting in that shop. You're committing you're uh, you're having casual sexual relations with people and you don't even realize it because you're so squished and tied up in this little tiny DIY shop. Now, people were queuing uh cuz there is this whole thing of let's get back to normality. Well, I tell you what normality is. I don't know exactly what normality is, but I tell you what normality isn't. I tell you what it isn't. It's uh, it's not queuing for four hours to buy a fucking radiator cover in a DIY store. Now I'm sorry for swearing. I was trying to make this whole uh, podcast uh, a little bit less explicit, but the minute you swear, then it just goes into this. So I may as well just go in for a penny in for a pound these motherfucking cunts that are queuing for the most pointless things this is it like i mean the problem with doi stores is that they within their walls they contain many things many things that are completely useless to anyone and very very essential things um like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's in there that people need. You might need uh, plumbing things. You might need a new toilet. I mean, that's an essential. You use that pretty much every day, depending on how your movements go. 
But, you know, th- those are things that you need. You might need to repair some plumbing things. You might need uh, gaffer tape. You might need glue. You know, th- y- people could be crying out for these things. But I would put it to you, and now this is just basically me making a wild accusation, but the accusation is based in reality. In fact, in 10 years of working for this retail company and people coming in and knowing what people are like and knowing what people buy, and 90% of people queuing for hours are going in for something pointless that they really don't need, that they could wait another month or two until things kind of calm down. Look, I'll be honest with you, I want to go into Woody's, I want to get some things, but um, they're not essential. I'm not going to die if I don't get a radiator cover. See, that's the thing, I, I really, really can't understand, especially things like radiator covers. They're, they're, look, I understand why people buy them. They're decorative. But I don't understand the thought process that 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 leads to it. Um, people sitting in their homes, they've got nothing to do, and they're looking at radiators going, that fucking radiator is staring at me. I fucking hate it. I want to encase it in a prison of MDF wood. And I say, Cara, listen, it's fine. It's just a radiator. You don't have to cover it over. It's not like disgusting it's not you know it's uh, relax woman relax but she couldn't relax but they have i mean no that's not a jml thing jml have weird things like uh well look here's a jml ad we're going to take an ad break but here's an here's an example of a jml ad Introducing Shower Feet from JML, the ultimate way to clean and care for beautiful feet. No more awkward bending or balancing. Shower Feet sticks to the base of your shower or bath, helping you to clean and look after your feet without having to bend. With over 1,000 deep cleansing bristles, you can gently clean, massage and exfoliate dry, callous skin for gorgeous-looking feet you'll be proud of. Shower Feet also has a built-in pumice stone to remove rough and cracked heels, leaving your feet feeling soft, smooth, and revitalized from heel to toe. You can even pour your favorite bath or shower gel into the cleverly designed micro holes for an invigorating foot spa experience. Sit back and relax and enjoy a blissful foot massage that will leave your feet feeling soft and smooth. No more awkward bending or balancing, Shower Feet attaches to any shower or bath and is ideal to use after sports or working out. The deep cleansing bristles can help eliminate foot odor and prevent athlete's foot by getting in between your toes and scrubbing all those hard to reach areas. Shower Feet is designed to fit any shape or size foot, so it's ideal for the whole family to enjoy. It's time to step out in style with Shower Feet from JML. Salmon of knowledge, salmon of knowledge, it's the salmon of knowledge, salmon, salmon of knowledge, it's the salmon of knowledge, salmon, salmon of knowledge tonight. Dun, 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 dun. And we're back, guys. Uh, listen, the the shower buddy, or the foot buddy, or whatever the fuck it was called, that JML thing, it sounds disgusting. If you're into feet, it's the sort of thing that Quentin Tarantino would buy um, for himself, and he'd buy for several of his friends. And he'd ask for videos of them using it just to prove that they're using it and nothing to do with him getting off on feet. Um, but re- like really, there's, you got to look up that ad. There's a lot of, um, if you're into feet, a lot of foot shots. But it kind of, it weirdly looks like, uh, it's like if someone saw someone lying on a bed of nails. You know the bed of nails? Um and it's usually uh, Indian mystical men that that lie on them. I mean, there's, that's probably xenophobic in some in some way. Uh, so even though I've been cancelled, I'm going to continue on. It looks like a bed of nails, but a bed of nails that someone said, right? Let's make it into a sandal, but also let's put like um, not nails, but uh, you know, like like fiber brushes, so people can c- clean their feet 
instead of uh, torturing themselves or enduring. I think that's they're professional endurers. People who sleep on bed of nails are like constantly. It's like they're sitting on a plane next to a screaming child going, eh, it's all right. I'm an endurer. This is what I do. This is all I do. Now, JML have sold some some stuff in the past that has been pointless. And I have never really enjoyed any of their stuff. I find a lot of their stuff just to be kind of like this. They have this thing called uh, uh, Angry Mama. And it's the most pointless fucking thing. Well, see, that's the thing. It has a point. But at the same time, if you think about it, you don't really need these things. Like the Angry Mama is something to clean your microwave. It's a little, you you take the head off it and it's got this little angry face and you fill it with vinegar and you fill it with water. Vinegar and water, mix it together. You put it in the microwave and you put it on and the steam comes out like uh, an Angry Mama screaming and the steam cleans the inside of the microwave. See, the problem with that is um, I've never lived with anyone who has cleaned a microwave. Um, I have always ended up doing it. I'm not complaining. I kind of like cleaning. However, you just get a cloth, a hot cloth and some cleaning product, spray it in, wipe it down. You're done. You don't need a plastic thing that you fill up. I mean, you're still going to have to clean off. It's it's not going to magically steam everything away. So yeah, steam works like that. But you still have to use a bit of elbow grease. Um, now, I think, apart from radiator covers, which JML, you know, obviously didn't sell, they have all these sort of... Uh, every one of their ads is like, you know, has this ever happened to you? Not anymore. Um they never really give you, they leave gaps in there for you to answer, even though it's a video that's being played on a loop. Um, one of the things that they sold when I worked there was a screen door for mosquitoes. Now, this was not for the American market, I guess, because we don't have mosquitoes over here. Like, I've been to other countries where they do have mosquitoes, and I tend to get eaten quite badly for a number of days the first couple of days and then they get kind of get used to my blood and then they just kind of stop eating me but generally I don't kind of suffer from mosquito bites mosquitoes is not a big problem over here and someone was going to buy it someone was like oh I'll buy this mosquito uh, screen door and you know the ones I mean it's like you see them in American movies where it's a little mesh door that's attached, screwed to your actual door. So you can leave your door open and have the mesh up so flies and mosquitoes don't get in. And someone was buying this. And look, when I was hired in Woody's, I was hired as a customer service uh, representative. So I was in the service of the customers. And I think a big service you can you can make to customers is if you tell them you shouldn't buy this thing. Or what I used to do with people, I'd say, look, I know you want to buy that, but think about it. Do you really need it? And with the screen door thing, it was like, and it's weird because sometimes when you say to people, uh, you can't buy that or you shouldn't buy that or I don't recommend that you buy that. Weirdly enough, they have a couple of different reactions. One of them is people get immediately suspicious because they're like, hmm, why isn't he trying to sell me stuff? Hmm, everyone's always trying to sell me stuff, but this guy isn't. Are people always trying to sell you things? Well, not anymore. And I just kind of, um, like for me, my job was to represent and help out customers. And I feel I wouldn't have been doing my job if I was selling them something that they didn't need or I was selling them something that was just, you know, coming out superfluous to requirements. Like when people are painting and then they buy those those sheets that you put down. 
when you're painting and I'm like just use newspapers like like my father used to use all the time newspapers um you don't need these things I'm like I'm trying to help people out now sometimes people really appreciate it and the thing is uh from a marketing uh standpoint from a sales standpoint if you can convince someone or tell someone that oh you don't really need this it's a waste of money you save them money and they look on you now as some sort of godlike figure. And ironically, if you tell them, oh, don't buy that, and tell them why, and give them a kind of a wink like, hey, I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. They're like, oh, my God, you're amazing. I trust you so much. Now, sell me anything. And you could literally sell them fucking anything because you've gained their trust. So it's weird. It's like people are either distrustful of someone because... They're not selling something because they're so used to people constantly trying to sell them things and then constantly buying things. So to sort of interrupt that that rhythm of buy this, okay, thanks very much, get out of here, uh, that kind of relationship to, no, you don't need that. Now, what do you need? I'll tell you what you really need. You need this and you need that. They're like, oh, oh, oh I'm in the hands of an expert here. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know why they're, they're not getting aroused. But... Yeah, like someone was trying to buy a screen door in September. And I said to them, I said, look, do you really need the screen door? And they were like, huh? It's like, you know, they'd never been questioned on any of their dumb purchases before. Because people buy a lot of dumb shit. And they're like, huh? I said, think about it. Like, wh- like, where do you live? Do you live in the Congo? Or do you live in Tala? Because one of those places has an insect problem. And it's not Tala. And it's September as well. So even if there are flies, which is which would be the best, you know, or the sorry, the worst case scenario, the flies aren't gonna eat you. And they're not gonna suck your blood. They're just gonna fly around and be annoying. And, you know, whatever they do. What do flies do? They vomit on food and then suck up the bile. You know. You obviously you don't want them flying around because they're disgusting. But you're not in any danger of getting malaria or having your ankles swell up really big, like what happened to uh, my brother Julian when we were in Florence uh, going to see Radiohead. Well, what a hipster sentence that is. But no, it's true. We were in Florence and he was getting bitten by mozzies and his whole uh, ankle had swollen up and it was difficult for him to walk. So we're not in that situation. We don't. You don't need a screen door. Get the fuck out of this place and never come back. Um, but people really do lose their, their their kind of common sense glands when they go shopping in Woody's. And uh, it's great to to tell people off, especially when you know I was like a floor staff member. Uh, work, I worked the tills. <laughs> Sounds like a cowboy cowboy song. I was a floor staff member I worked the tills in December There was so many people buying baubles You wouldn't believe Actually, I was Santa Claus uh, in December in Woody's And I used to walk around the, the store Dressed as Santa Claus with a big sack, heavily laden sack full of uh, treats for the children. Um, what's that? I've been cancelled again? Okay. Um, but I, yeah, I'd, wa- I'd walk around as Santa Claus in character. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a pure method actor. I was in character the whole time. The phones would ring and I'd answer as Santa Claus. I'd go, hello, Woody's DIY Glass Nevin. How may I direct your call? Um, and people would hang up in disgust. But yeah, I used to, and and occasionally you get kids, like there was one kid kept coming up to me, this non-believer, who was questioning why Santa Claus, immortal, morbidly obese, uh, gift giver man, non-profit, why he would be in Woody's DIY in Glasnevin in Dublin uh, a week before Christmas. Like, surely, the kid was like, surely he'd have better things to be doing. Surely he'd be busy. He'd be up to his eyeballs right now. Hmm. 
I guess it's true. Because he kept coming up to me, trying to, you know, catch me out. But the very fact that I was like, you know, in Woody's DIY in Dublin a week before Christmas Day, or Christmas Eve, really, uh, which is his, his busy time, Christmas Day, he's just putting his feet up, eating eating a lot of food, judging by his weight, and doing very little exercise. You know, he's he's lucky he's immortal. Otherwise, he'd be uh, in, in, in constant uh, constant health issues and pain. So um, there's something for the kids to think about. So um, this kid would come up and he'd be like, trying to catch me out. Like, I'm in a fucking DIY store in Dublin, you eejit. But he'd be coming up going, Excuse me, Mr. Claude. But yes, son. Yes, son. And he'd say, where are the reindeer? And I'd say, I'd have to answer really quick. I'd say, well, the reindeer are obviously resting in the stables because it's not Christmas Eve yet. They're resting up for their big journey where I go to every child's room and house in one single night because that's possible because magic. And he'd like stare at me for a second and then go, "Mm, okay, and sort of walk off uh, partially satisfied. And then... Eventually, he'd come back with another question. And he had one question for me, which was, um, I was wearing, obviously, I was wearing a a white beard over my beard, which was a lot less gray back then. It's like, I'm almost like Santa Claus now, where I almost have the full Santa Claus compliment beard. Um, Just a little bit of, a little bit of white dye, and and I'm done. But um, it was shorter. So I had the, the big fake Santa beard over my own beard. But this kid had noticed that. And he came up to me and he was like, come back and goes, why have you got a red beard under your white beard? And I was like, that's a very good question, son. Well, that's my summer beard, which grows in after Christmas. And he looked at me. And this was like the biggest bullshit answer of all time. But then... If you're a kid and you believe in a morbidly obese uh, gift giver man who never dies and always gives you presents, and he kind of just stared at me and went, okay. And like, come on, kid. Put two and two together. He was no Hercule Poirot, this bloody kid. I just, you know. I mean, uh, people that come in <laughs> and... Uh, you know, old ladies would be coming in and it'd start raining. And, you know, sometimes it'd start raining and they'd look up. They'd look at the sound, first of all. And uh, they'd hear the rain on the roof with this kind of corrugated roof. So when it rained, you'd hear the like, tappy, tappy, tap. And uh, they'd look at the sound and then they'd look at me and they'd go, Is that rain? And I'd always go, well, yeah, I hope so. If it's not rain, then we're in a lot of trouble. I don't know what's happening here, but probably a squadron of kamikaze pigeons trying to take out our sweet, sweet DIY store. Um, But I'll get back there someday. Oh, good old Woody's. So, yeah, if you fancy it, go to, you know, go to Woody's. Like, be kind to those people. They're they're dealing with a lot of shit. Like I had a man one time. He was there with his girlfriend. He was in his I'd say he was in his early thirties. And I was in my sort of mid twenties at that point. And uh it was nice to just to have a bit of authority over someone. And I had authority over this man. Because basically what he did was he took a small tin of paint, wood paint, wood grain paint. So this was paint for wood and in the store he opened the paint he took a little bit of it out on his finger and he rubbed it on the linoleum floor we have like a lino plastic floor so he rubbed the paint on that and i caught him i came in and saw him rubbing it like he's on his knees with this little tin rubbing this uh varnish but it was like a stain, which like, and I don't know if you're familiar with uh, wood and linoleum, 
but the two things are very, very different. It's almost as if they're different surfaces, like they they have a genetically uh, different makeup. And I just kind of looked at him and was like, sir, what are you doing? And he said, I just want to see if the color is right. And I said, well, that's not a wooden floor. That's for wood. And he was like, huh? He said, look, do you live in a house that is a massive room and is lit with fluorescent tube lighting? And is the floor that you're painting a lino floor? And he was like, no. I said, then what you're doing is completely pointless. And also kind of stupid because you're not getting any indication of the co- like the color there's a little picture on the front of the tin cans and i know a million people are screaming at me now going but the color never matches the tin it does most of the time but this man like he wasn't even painting on wood so i told him off and then i walked away and then when i came back he was doing it again and I looked at him and it was lovely. It was like a, a sort of a, a a teacher and a child who knew they were doing wrong. And he kind of looked at me sheepish, sheepishly and sort of put away the, the, the paint. I was just, I kind of gave him a sort of a, mm-hmm, with my eyes, a sort of a, mm, yes, do we need to go to the naughty corner? Do I need to beat you to a pulp so you learn your lesson? Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I didn't beat him to a pulp that day. But uh, it's just great. It's just great to tell, tell people off. And people don't see That's the weird thing. You don't go into... I've never seen anyone open something before they buy it. Um, well, I mean, like sometimes in a supermarket, you'd be buying a packet of crisps, but you're hungry, so you start eating the crisps. You know, you just scan it in, and there you go. Um, and then you pay for it. But I've never um, experienced anyone opening stuff to try it out so much. Like, we used to see, like, bags of dog food would be open. It'd be like, you know, new improved recipe, it would say. And I always would think, God, what did the dog food taste like before? I mean, this is dog food that they're improving the flavor of. Um, pa- bags of uh, compost. And fertilizer would be open, like a little rip in the bag. And I'm like, are people eating fucking fertilizer and going, oh, God, it's horrible. Oh, yes, my lawn would love that. The flowers would enjoy that. I just don't, I don't understand it. It's like, you know, you wouldn't go to a supermarket and open a bowl of cornflakes or a, a box of cornflakes and pour some milk in there. Uh, just to see how the milk and the cornflakes go together. You wouldn't do it. Maybe that's a bad analogy. I don't know. I'm terrible at these things. Listen, guys, um, this has been mainly a rant about Woody's and JML. Um, You don't have to buy JML products. Nobody does. But hey, what are you going to do? So, guys, um, we have a a special uh, Brendan Blowhart song. Now, I've heard Brendan uh, has been having a hell of a time his wife, uh, one of his wives, uh, left him. He's been living uh, in an apartment in Dublin. He's been living large. He's been living uh, wild. And he's been up to no good. But he said he he was sorry about that. And he's going to uh, record uh, a Dean Martin classic. So he has recorded a Dean Martin classic. Um, that's Amore. So let's have a listen to hear what Brendan's version of That's Amore is. Hopefully it's not filthy and full of swear words i mean i really should be screening uh these songs before i play them on the podcast but hey what are you going to do i just don't have the time so uh here's brendan to play us out and guys uh thanks very much for listening if you want to get extra content go to edwin salmon of knowledge on patreon and become a patron uh if you just want to support me share like subscribe review my podcast it doesn't cost you anything but time and it really helps me out uh tell your friends fun at parties and i'll see you guys 
very soon. Salmon of knowledge, the 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 salmon of knowledge. Goodbye. When the moon hits your royal oil, get big pizza pie, that's a salt. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's a fat means. Bells will ring, ting a ling a ling, ting a ling a ling, and you'll say, I'm high now. Hearts will play, tippy tippy tay, tippy tippy tay, that you've had half a pill. When the stairs make you drool, just like a pasta food, that's amphetamines. When you dance down the street with the cloud at your feet, you're coming off. When you walk in a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, senore. Excuse me, but you see, back in old Napoli, that's a mushrooms. When the moon is your way, like a big pizza boy, that's amphetamine. When the world seems to shine like you've had too much wine, that's a cocaine. Little bit, little bit of me, but it's it, my lead. Drop it on your gums, drop it on your gums, drop it on your gums, or just put it up your bones. That's the drugs. The drugs. 